Hello, good morning and welcome back to all of you. It's 11 a.m. right now in Canada and welcome back to the live session. My name is Vishal Manocha. I'm your host for the next 30 minutes and we will be updating you regarding all the immigration update we had from the last one week. And this will also give you a time to definitely ask all the questions you have in your mind regarding any immigration need you have. So welcome and thank you and welcome to all of you back to our live session. Our office is based in Brampton, Ontario. We have another office of, uh, in Alberta and we have two locations back home in India. But right now I am in Vancouver to the west coast of Canada. Yes, we live in Toronto. We have an office in Brampton, but I'm here for a business trip for an ISAF conference to get new products and new colleges tie up for all of our clients. So right now I am in BC in the west coast of Canada and we will be talking about all the immigration update we have. So you have any question, kindly ask us. We help all of our clients in all the immigration needs that matter. Either you're looking for college admissions, you're looking for permanent residency, spousal open work permit, and your spousal PR or express entry, any category of application you're looking at, we can definitely help you out in all the in, uh, all the immigration needs. So let us start off with uh, with the update we have for this week. And as I said, you you have time to ask your question, any concern you have kindly post it into the comment section while we are live. This will give you an opportunity to ask your question. So the first update for this week was that the IRCC has updated its settlement fund requirement. Now, what exactly is that and what has been updated? I will be briefing you on that very soon. The second update for this week is that we will be uh, after this one. The strike has ended. Yes, the IRCC staff which went on strike for, I think two weeks ago that ended last week, sorry, beginning of this week on Monday, the strike has ended. So yes, the IRCC is back and their team is working on the OR application if your application is under process. So we will be ta telling about who all were impacted and now what you can expect after the strike is over, over for now. So, we, so let us start off with the first one with the IRCC settlement fund update. It has been updated again. Basically, if you are applying for, to Canada for your permanent residency, you need to show that you have got enough settlement fund for you and for your family. Like once you move to Canada, you have sufficient fund for yourself and your family to come and stay here, get settled down. You have those funds. So the requirement of that has been increased. So if your express entry profile is still in the pool and you have not been invited, you are supposed to update your uh, settlement fund with the new amount which has been updated on the IRCC website. That amount depends on the family members you have in your family. If you have a family of one, it's around 13,000 something. If you have a family of two, it comes to around 50,000 something and so on. So depending on the family members you have, you have to update accordingly to so look at the new uh, data available on IRCC website and you will find the information and kindly go ahead and update on your express entry profile. Now this is applicable to federal skill worker class people only. If you are applying under Canadian experience class, the settlement fund is not required as of, but if you don't have funds in your account uh, and you are qualifying under CEC, you still have to show that you have got a job available, you are working and your income is more than the amount required. Say for example, you are a single person and your income is $17,000 a year, say for example, and the settlement fund is $13,500, so you still, you don't need to worry, you still don't need to show any fund because you have got enough income to support once your PR is approved. But if you are under federal skill worker, that means if you are applying from outside Canada, then definitely you have to show this fund. There is no exemption, so you have to make sure that you are showing this settlement fund. Now, a lot of time we do get questions from our client outside Canada, like what sort of funds are acceptable as settlement funds and uh, do I need to keep the settlement fund till my application under process and at what time should I show the settlement fund? So basically when you create your profile, that's the first thing you do if you want to apply under Express Entry. So once you create your profile, you have to make sure that you have got sufficient fund uh, available for you, but that time you don't have to show that in your bank account because you're just creating your profile. But once you get your invitation to apply, those funds should be available with you and the source of fund, if they are immediate fund, then source of fund should also be available. 
when you submit your application for permanent residency you have to show the proof of the funds you have that could be your fixed deposits your money lying into your saving accounts these are the one which are accepted by IRCC don't put uh, like funds like property fixed assets they are not considered as settlement fund so it has to be liquid funds which should be available so make sure you have got those funds when you apply for your file for federal skill worker class from anywhere in the world you will need that funds in your account without that you will not be able to uh, definitely submit your file if you are submitting your file that will be rejected because settlement fund is one of the requirement of your PR application file so if you forget to submit those, uh, those funds or if you don't have those funds then unfortunately your application fill will be rejected so make sure before you create your profile you are aware about your settlement fund you should know how many how much fund you need and that should be available for you readily when you apply for your permanent residency and as i said if you don't have that then the chances may be that your work permit application sorry your pr application will be refused on the ground that you don't have enough settlement fund because uh, when you move to canada definitely the government want to make sure because it's a move, new country you're moving in it will take you time to get job maybe getting settled down say so they want to make sure that you've got sufficient fund to come in canada and get settled down meanwhile you're looking for job opportunities or getting uh, planning yourself to get settled down in canada you need to make sure that you have got sufficient settlement funds so that is the whole idea why this requirement is there and it is one of the mandatory requirement you have to make sure that you have those funds with you if you want to if you apply for your pr that will be looked into and if you don't have it the application might be rejected so this is about the settlement fund though it has been recently updated mostly uh, once in a year it does get updated because of the inflation we have in the country or the prices changes so do keep uh, that in your mind if you have created your express entry profile you have to go and update those settlement fund into your application if you don't do that and as i said you the application might be rejected or even your profile can be declined as ineligible because you have not updated your settlement fund so make sure you have uh, if you have your profile you do update it right away and if you have any concern any question contact our office we can definitely help you and uh, let you know if you're not able to figure it out how and where to go and update those funds so that was the update regarding the settlement fund the second one we have for this week is your IRCC strike and this Monday which is a great great news IRCC went on strike and they were on strike for almost two weeks before they return back on this Monday, uh, the pre the just went by 9 a.m. They were back or uh, they have resumed all their services. When the strike was there, there were a lot of services which were affected, uh, like per passport submission was affected, your permanent residency card application was processed, uh, definitely uh, was something which was uh, affected with this one. And there were a lot of PR applications which were affected with this one. And other than that, other than that, there were a lot of like ESDC was also on strike, which is Employment and Service Development Canada. So that was impacting your LMI application. Even those are those people are also back working. The only, uh, I think the only people who are still on strike is from CRA. Other than that, all the department, government department, which went on strike 10 days ago are back on work. So basically that is a good news. Now your application, which we were expecting would get delayed. Although this two weeks, uh, strike will still affect the processing time of your application it may take longer than what is showing on the website but that is i think the good news is it the strike was not prolonged for long and it's just two within two weeks it's ended and the staff is back on work which is a great great news so definitely you now don't need to worry about uh, processing your application although as i said it will be impacted a bit but you don't have to worry too much about it as ircc is back and your application will be start uh, will be processed as I said not maybe according to the normal processing time or what is mentioned on the website but that's uh, that but that's that's okay now you have to don't have to worry as I said the strike is over the people are back on the work so it will be definitely your application will be processed as soon as possible now so meanwhile I've got a couple of questions let me take up those questions before we go to the next update and as a uh, to let all of you know please please if you have any question kindly post it into the comment section i will be happy to answer them for you live right away a lot of people have i know a lot of concern during their application submission either study permit work permit spousal pr 
you are looking for an answer so this is the right time for you to get an answer so if you have any question kindly post it into the comment section and i'll be happy to help you so we have got nimish uh, patel with us good morning nimish thanks for joining then we have nakul asking a question can one go on a tour visa and get that converted into a work permit how will this be done okay nakul that's a good question there are a lot of people who ask this question there are a lot of people who come to canada on a visit visa and they do have this question in their mind that is visitor visa can be converted into a work permit or not so answer to the question in nakul yes it is possible but you have to follow the whole process first of all you need to have an employer who's ready to sponsor your application only then only if say when i mean sponsoring your application first of all they need to offer you a job once they offer you a job they need to apply for an application called lmia which is called labor market impact assessment once that application is submitted to esdc and it takes around 2 to 3 months the, for the application to be decided if you get a positive outcome of your application which means your lmia has a positive uh, decision then that means your application initially has been approved by ESDC and now you need to apply for your work permit application to IRCC. Now, approval, approval of an LMI doesn't mean that you can work right away. You have to apply for your work permit. Until you don't get your work permit, you will not be able to apply. So make sure uh, you are you are only have come, your process is completed not just when the LMI is approved it completes when you get your work permit approval so make sure you're waiting till that time before you apply for your work uh, <clears throat> sorry before you start working but as soon as the application has been decided definitely you can start working now if your question is example if the LMI is appro uh, approved will is it guaranteed that the work permit will also be approved the answer is no your LMI application, your position should match your, uh, your previous experience, your qualification, then only your application will get approved. You still need to submit all the relevant documents regarding your previous application. And once you have submitted those application and uh, that application, the IRCC will review that does your experience and qualification matches and you will be able to do that job uh, or the job duties of the job being offered, then only the work permits get approved. So, so we have seen a lot of time the people walk into our office saying I have uh, I'm from a teaching background and I've been offered a job of a food service super supervisor should I go ahead and grab that opportunity and apply for work permit the answer is no because you don't have a previous experience the LMI application will get approved because the LMI application is the part of the employer at that time your profile has not been submitted uh, to any of the department they don't know who the client is they just know your name so the LMI application will get approved but when you apply for your work permit the chances are the high, high high chances that your work permit application will be rejected because you don't match the uh, there's no previous experience you have and you are not uh, completing the requirement of that NOC knock so make sure you are very very uh, you are you're aware of all these things just don't get into a trap uh, we have seen a lot of consultants who are uh, like advising people oh no don't worry we can get you a job offer with any stream it doesn't matter what profile you are back from but that is not correct if your profile is not matching to the noc job uh, been offered to you there are high chances that your work permit application will be refused so make sure you are aware of this thing before you apply for your work permit or for an lmi but to answer your question, Rakul, yes, LMI, uh, sorry, a Vista visa can be converted into a work permit, but there are a lot of things you need to keep in mind. Then we have another next question from Ganesh. Good morning, Vishal, sir. I have submitted spousal PR application via organization. All the documents are submitted. What is my next step and how long is the processing time? So, Ganesh, once you have submitted your application for spousal PR, you have to wait for the further instruction. If there are any further documents required by IRCC, then definitely they will come back and ask us but the next step could be if you have not done your medical you may get a medical request uh, if you haven't done your biometric you'll get your biometric request then your application goes under review and once it goes into review it uh, does check your uh, your criminality check your settlement fund everything has been checked and once everything seems okay you get your pre-arrival package and once you get a peer of a pre-approval package again that doesn't mean that the peer is approved but that's an indication that your file is moving towards a positive direction and you can expect a result soon. So now it could take, if it's an offshore application, it could take around six to eight months. 
if it is on show roughly the same time but the processing time does keep on changing so there is no exact time i can suggest you or tell you but yes you can uh, we have seen example uh, results coming in three months also and it could take even eight to nine months so just be patient and follow the instruction if anything is further received from ircc if not you have to be patient and wait for the decision to be made usually you don't get update on daily basis so as and when there will be any update definitely you will be informed and then you have to follow the instruction depending on what the next update from ircc is so i hope ganesh that answer your question if you still have any doubt you can definitely contact us and we'll be happy to revert back to you then we have gurpreet kaur asking us hello pcc done in september 2020 how to get new pcc or previous week pcc is valid okay so the uh, PCC is police clearance certificate. When you apply for your permanent residency, you need PCC from the country, from all the countries, in fact, where you have stayed for more than six months. So if you have stayed in, say, five countries, we have been to five countries, say, for example, but in three of the countries, you stay for more than six months, and two of the countries, you came back in two, three months, then the only countries where you stayed for six months, you have to get your PCC from there. That's the, that's the rule. Now answering Gurpreet's question, if you have been to that country, say example, you got you are from India and you got your um, PC in September 2020. Now, since getting your PR, if you have been back to your country, which is India, and if you have stayed for more than six months, then you will need a PCC again. But if you have been to back home to your country, but you have not stayed for six months, or if you have stayed for less than six months, then you don't need a PCC again the previous PCC is valid. So basically, if you have not uh, uh, gone back to that country and stayed for more than six months, the PCC is still valid. So the PCC done by Gurpreet in September 2020 is still valid for uh, for your PR application. Uh, but I'll still advise once you, while you're submitting your PR application, um, you still let the IRCC know that why, why, what is the reason of you not providing the new uh, uh, PCC. I know the officers are aware of the rules, but we have seen in few cases the application being sent back, sent back that say stating that the PCC was uh, not valid or is expired. So make sure you are explaining that that what is the reason of you not submitting a new PCC, which is that as per the rule of IRCC, that you're not supposed to submit a new PCC if your application, if your PCC is, if you have not been to that country for more than six months after the PCC was issued. So I hope Gurpreet that answer your question and uh, you are um, basically uh, if you have further question regarding your PR application again you can ask us and we will be happy to help you on that one. So now till now we have discussed two updates in the show the one was the settlement fund which was up recently updated by IRCC and second that the IRCC strike has ended which is a great news and definitely now people uh, if they were expecting delay to the application hopefully that will be not too much and the application will be processed on time now coming back to the college admissions here because we do uh, as net worth immigration uh, not only just participate in all the immigration application we do we also help clients getting college admissions in onshore and offshore client both can take our services and get admissions right now we have got seats available for september 2023 onshore and offshore both may 2023 is almost closed for offshore it was closed obviously a few months ago. Onshore also, there are no more application being accepted for any onshore application for May 2023. But if you have got seats, uh, if you have got, uh, if you're looking for college admission for fall 2023, if you're in India and looking for offshore admission, you can contact our office in India in Karnal or Kushetra. And in, in Canada, you can contact our office in Brampton. Brampton. Onshore admissions are available for um, May 2000, sorry, September 2023. Example, if you have come to a private college and if you don't want to study in that college and you're planning to move to a public college, you can contact us. Or if you have completed your one year program and looking for a second year program, again, you can contact us and we can get you a second year program. You also have to keep in mind if you're doing two different programs, uh, you cannot have a break of two semesters in two programs. So, for example, you started your education in January 2023 and your first program is uh, finishing in August 2023. So either you should get admission yourself in September 2023 or late to late by January 2024 in the second program. Because as I mentioned, you can only have 
uh, one semester break between your two programs. If you're taking more than that, then definitely the chances are your work permit application may get rejected because you have not followed the IRCC guidelines of uh, the gap between the two programs or for how long you can stay in Canada without uh, studying in one or the other institution. So make sure if your first year program has finished in May, we can get your admission in September 2023, even if it's completing in August. You have got your document, your current enrollment proof where you're studying in the second semester. We can also still get you September 2023 admissions also. So, uh, so if you're looking for, if you or your friend, anybody looking for any college admission help, you can contact us and we will be very happy to assist you in your college admission need. Uh, if it's, it's across Canada, anywhere, if you're looking for admission, we can assist you, not only just in Ontario, we can help you in BC, we can help you in other part also. So make sure that you are, uh, if you have got any need uh, of college admission, you can contact us and we can get your admissions done, guaranteed for September 2023 onshore. So don't delay if you are looking for admissions, contact our office in Brampton for onshore and offshore. As I said, we do have seats available for offshore also. But for that, you have to contact our India office. You can also contact our Canada office too, but it's advisable to get in touch with India office. If you have any question, um, uh, I cannot see any more question right now, but if you have any question clients, if you want to ask anything, do go ahead and submit your questions here. I will be happy to answer. If you have any concern, as I said, any topic about immigration you want to ask about, this is the right time for you. The whole idea here is to give you the updates to get any question you have answer them for uh, the those for you right away live because doing any category of PR application uh, sorry any application for any work permit or visitor visa study permit is not easy it looks like easy it's always better to take a professional advice because we see a lot of clients who come back to us after refusals because sometimes it's very 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 minor mistakes but just because they are not exactly aware of the rules so then uh, these things can happen. I can give you a live example about six days yesterday. One of my friend called and uh, they have they are here on a work permit, but his wife went to India for a for a visit. What they never realized was they do have a work permit extension um, once they came in, but they never got their passport stamped. A TRV was required for them to travel back, but they ignored that part of it. His wife went to India and when she was trying to return back to Canada, she was denied the boarding at the airport. The reason was there was no stamping on the passport. Although she had a valid work permit, she can still come back and work for an employer in Canada for the next two years. But if you don't have a TRV stamp, you will not be allowed to come back to the country. Now, these are very minor, minor things which people sometimes ignore and then they get into the situation. But yes, it's advisable, always, always advisable that you uh, take uh, if you're not if you're not willing to take a professional advice at least now most of the things are also available online so you can go online and check about your rules your eligibility requirement if for example on a study permit you are allowed to only say example between there's another example if you studies have completed and you want to apply for a post graduate work permit by the time you have completed your education and you're waiting for your transcript or diploma you can still continue working part-time but as soon as your diploma or certificate is issued you have to stop working till you don't apply for your post-graduate work permit now most of the people are not aware of this rule and they keep on working and that is a problem if IRCC finds out that you have violated the term and condition of a study permit so that will definitely impact your work permit application and your work permit application can also get refused so again, this is again a small thing, but it can impact you in a big way if you're not exactly aware of the rules. And the rules say, if, for example, if you're allowed to work 20 hours a week and you have been working 22 hours, it's still violation of your study work permit. So it's not like if you're working 20 hours and if you work uh, allowed to work 20 hours, but you're working 30 hours, then only it's a, it's a problem. Even if you work a single extra hour on top of what is allowed during your study permit rules then you are definitely violating the term condition of your work permit and if IRCC finds out which they will eventually one day or the other then your application may get rejected for your work permit. So these are very minor minor things people definitely sometimes ignore or they don't take professional advice and then they get into trouble. So if so we, my advice to all of our clients and viewers is we have a consultation 
you can take up a consultation for definitely any question you have any file you're looking into if you are not sure about how to submit the application my advice will be not to do it yourself because that could have a great impact on your application and as i said your application may be rejected on that ground so we don't have too many more updates for this week to be honest there were no uh yeah, uh, in fact, yeah, there's one more update we can uh, I can give you about British Columbia. Yes, there was a draw from British Columbia province on 2nd of May. It was an all category draw for the provincial nominee program. The people with skilled worker class, with international education, with the international experience, they all qualified. Although the number was not very high, but still this draw was held on 2nd of May. And right now, as I, as I mentioned you in the beginning of the show, I am in Vancouver. I mean the west coast of Canada right now. It's it's not a good weather outside today. It's raining for the whole day. Uh, so I'll definitely, I, I thought it will be much better as compared to Toronto, but it's almost similar. Although the city is very beautiful, I think it's more more beautiful than Toronto we have. But it's a great downtown area where I'm right now. But unfortunately, it's raining outside, and uh, I don't know how the day is going to be after this today. But Yes, it is the west coast of Canada right now. I am in another set of Vancouver. We had a PNP draw recently and the update has already been provided to you. If you need further information, definitely you can visit uh, British Columbia PNP website and you can get more information about who all were invited. If you were not invited and you think you were eligible for that stream, you can contact us and we can figure out for you where you think could have gone wrong. As I said to you earlier, that even because of the small or minor mistake there are chances that your application may not be picked or may be rejected so it's always always advisable to take advice from uh, from a regulated professional consultant like in canada we have seen there are a lot of people who are uh, there was a recent news where 700 students have been deported back to india although they have not yet been deported and the application the processing is still in time the, the reason is because they got into what we call as a ghost consultant that's what we referred here in Canada. So they got uh, <clears throat> into trap of that one and they use a fake letter and document to send them to Canada. And now those applications have been somehow figured out by IRCC. Although those are clients who are applying for their permanent residency right now, a few of them, most of them have completed their education, their work permit, and <clears throat> they were at the verge of getting their PR approved. So IRCC can even go back and track what was submitted in your application. So make sure you are always getting your work done through a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. So my name is Vishal Manocha. I am the director of Net Worth Immigration Solutions. We have offices in Ontario, in India. You can contact us for all your immigration need. We will be live back again next Friday at the same time. Meanwhile, you have a great weekend and a great week. I will see you again next Friday. Again, with more updates from the IRCC and hopefully we may or might have an IRCC express entry draw. There was no draw <clears throat> this week. There was a draw previously where the score was 483 and 3,500 invitations were sent last week. But there was no express entry draw this week. But maybe when we have a next draw, I'm pretty sure if you look at the pattern, then there should be a draw coming up next Wednesday. So we will be talking more about it in the next show. So thank you all for joining in. Thank you for having your questions. I will see you live again next Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and India, 8.30 p.m. Thank you all for joining in. See you all very soon. Bye-bye.